Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing well. And today Corsair launches a new addition to their Crystal Series cases, the 680X. Now you might be familiar with the smaller Crystal Series cases that released quite some time ago, like the 460X and the 570X, but the new 680X is quite a bit larger and builds on the smaller 280X. So today we're going to see what's on offer for this larger enclosure in terms of water cooling support, take a look at hardware compatibility and clearances, and as usual, test airflow and system thermals. So to start this review, I'll first mention that the Crystal 680X is quite a large case even by ATX mid-tower standards, and specifically the footprint of the case is what's large due to that wider dual chamber layout. The 680X brings a glass exterior to the main chamber of the case, housing a motherboard, graphics cards, fans and radiators, with the secondary chamber hidden away by closed off panels containing your power supply and storage. We're getting a nice matte finish available in either black or white, although it is just plastic. Now one of the focus points of the 680X are those light loop 120 RGB fans that come pre-installed at the front. Some of the best looking RGB fans on the market in my opinion, but also not cheap. This drives up the price significantly compared to if the case was just bundled with standard fans or no fans at all, with the Crystal 680X on the market for $249 US. So this enclosure is obviously marketed towards enthusiasts who would be populating this case with some expensive hardware, so my review today will be one from an enthusiast perspective. Now with the Crystal 280X, it had thumbscrew mounting for the side panel, but the larger 680X has done away with that and it's now nicely hinged without thumbscrews on the side panel. It secures with magnets towards the front, opens up nicely with just the right amount of force and can be completely removed with a single screw on the hinge and easily lifted off. The top panel is also glass and this is mounted via thumb screws for good reason and this panel is elevated about 18 millimeters from the rest of the case to allow for adequate airflow. Plenty of room for air to make its way into the front intake fans as well. There's an opening surrounding the entire front panel, so a big thumbs up to Corsair here. IO is located at the top of the case on top of the secondary chamber. Here we're getting USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C, two USB 3.0 ports and your usual mic and headphone jack. Now let's open up that secondary chamber and take a look in there. So your power supply mounts at the bottom right hand side of the chamber and directly above that you've got separate cages for your three three and a half inch drives and four two and a half inch drives. The rest of the chamber is not very well utilized if I'm honest in terms of space. Apart from the storage cages and the installed PSU it's basically an empty chamber for cables. On a positive note an RGB controller is included for those light loop fans. Magnetic dust filters are included pretty much everywhere, which is great to see, and they don't look too dense, so they shouldn't hurt airflow too much if you decide to use them. Okay, now let's talk about radiator support for the 680X, and here we have up to a 280mm radiator at the bottom, up to a 280 at the top, and up to a 360mm radiator at the front. I did find clearances between these radiators to be very conflicting though, and if you are planning to do a custom loop in this case, you'll probably be disappointed. To start with, if you're planning on using a 360mm radiator at the front of the case, the top and bottom radiator brackets will now pretty much be completely blocked, allowing you to only populate a 120mm radiator there. So what you're left with now is a 360mm radiator at the front, your motherboard and components in the center of the chamber, and then a ton of empty space above and below. To be fair, you can still accommodate fans at the very bottom of the case, even with the 360mm radiator in the front, but the top bracket will now only accommodate a single 120mm radiator or fan, which will just look awkward. Okay, so let's forget about the 360 at the front. What about a triple 280mm radiator setup at the front, top, and the bottom? Well, you can't do that either. In fact, mounting a 280mm radiator at the front full stop is a bit of a pain in the butt as you're forced to mount it at the very top of the radiator bracket or the very bottom. Other enthusiast cases provide mounting rails on the entire bracket, allowing you to mount a 280mm radiator in the center of the bracket and allowing for additional clearance for top and bottom mounted radiators. Here though, you can either choose to completely block the top or bottom bracket compared to providing enough clearance for both. This is one of the major pitfalls of the 680X in my opinion. For a $249 US enclosure that's also this large, you'd better hope that clearances and water cooling support are well thought out 
but here that's just not the case. So if you're planning on doing a custom loop, I'd recommend leaving the front mounted light loop fans as they are and mounting two thick 280mm radiators at the top and the bottom. That way clearances should be fine for even the thickest of radiators and you've got some extra room towards the front of the case for a reservoir. For graphics card clearance, you've got up to 330mm of length with the front intake fans installed and with a standard 30mm rad at the front that reduces to 300mm. So for those using a front mounted AIO for example, just make sure your graphics card is under 300 millimeters and you're good to go. You've also got vertical PCI expansion slots for vertical GPU mounting, but no bracket is included. Okay, so here's our finished test system that we use for all ATX mid tower testing. It's got a Ryzen 7 17700 strapped underneath a Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 cooler and an ASUS GTX 1080 Strix. I've also done additional thermal testing with two 120 mil fans at the bottom running as intake, blowing up against the GPU, and with two 140 mil fans at the top of the case running in exhaust. On to thermals now, starting with the CPU running in Blender. Here we are running towards the warmer end of the stack, but do keep in mind that the majority of cases in the chart are high airflow cases. For example, with the 680X at stock, we're running 2.3 degrees warmer than the stock Mesh FIC, which it's honestly not bad. However, the improvement that we get by adding fans to the 680X isn't as great as what you'll see with actual high airflow cases. That story does change a little bit when we move on to GPU thermals now though, and we find that by adding two 120mm fans directly underneath the GPU, the thermals on the GTX 1080 Strix improve by about 3 degrees C. Keep in mind that the system was extremely loud at this point with eight fans in total running at 100%, but nonetheless, there is a potential for thermal improvement there. Overall, thermals for both the CPU and the GPU are okay. Certainly not bad, but not as great as cases like the Mesh FIC or the NZXT H500. But the main focus of the Corsair 680X is on that dual chamber layout. And personally, I don't see any real benefit of using this structural layout for the 680X compared to something more compact and conventional like Fractal Designs, Define R6 and S2. Not only are those cases smaller, but they have superior radiator support at the same time. The Lee and Lee 011 is regarded as one of the best cases on the market at this point and also has a dual chamber layout, but there again it has much better execution and radiator support. Overall, the 680X is a pretty case. It gives you the potential to build a very large, very colorful system. If you like the way it looks and the premium RGB fans that come with it, then by all means. However, if you're an enthusiast who is building a proper large ATX system, you will likely be a bit frustrated. The radiator mounting just doesn't seem that well thought out compared to the competition, and space utilization, especially in the secondary chamber, is really quite poor. For a case this large and this expensive, I did expect a bit more if I'm honest. I will have the new 680X linked in the description below, as well as a few other mid-tower cases that I recommend. So check those out if you are in the market for a new PC or if you're just going to upgrade your existing case. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already and I'll see you all in the next one.